Let's look at the construction of a simple perspective cylindrical chart, not a Mercator. By drawing a straight line for the equator and then drawing meridians as equally spaced parallel lines, we are producing a chart in which the scale is constantly changing. Let's see why. On the Earth, the meridians converge so that at the equator there are 60 nautical miles to 1 degree change of longitude. But at some other latitude, say 60 north, the meridians are closer together. We can work out this distance using the departure formula. Remember, departure is change of longitude in minutes times cosine of latitude. So that at 60 north, for 1 degree change of longitude, the departure is 60 minutes times the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 0.5. So the departure is 30 nautical miles. The meridians are only 30 nautical miles apart at 60 north. So when we draw them as parallel, we are changing the scale at every latitude. Let's establish what this east-west scale change is. Scale, or representative fraction, is defined as chart length over Earth distance. The fact that the meridians are parallel means that the east-west chart length does not change with latitude, so we can replace the equal sign in this equation with a proportional sign and replace the chart length by 1. But what is Earth distance? It's departure. And departure is change of longitude times cosine of the latitude. But look at the diagram again. The change of longitude is constant at any latitude. It's 1 degree. So because our equation is one of proportionality, not equality, we can take out change of longitude. It doesn't alter the scale of the relationship. The scale at any latitude is therefore proportional to the reciprocal of the cosine of the latitude. There is a mathematical term for 1 over cosine. It's called the secant. To give an example, the secant of 60 degrees is 1 over the cosine of 60 degrees. The cosine of 60 degrees is a half. So the secant of 60 degrees is 2. Therefore, the east-west scale on any cylindrical chart changes as the secant of the latitude. We've just seen that the east-west scale on any chart with parallel meridians must change as the secant of the latitude. Now we will consider how the north-south scale changes. Look at this diagram of a pure perspective cylindrical projection. This shows how the light would fall if a cylinder were wrapped round the reduced earth at the equator. Let's consider any latitude, for instance, 15 north. For any latitude, the line defined by the angle of latitude forms one side of a triangle, the hypotenuse. The equator is the adjacent. The elevation angle from the equator is the included angle. And the vertical distance from the equator up the side of the cylinder is the opposite. This forms a right-angled triangle, with the vertical distance being a function of the tangent of the latitude. This explains why the perspective cylindrical projection is not orthomorphic. The north-south distance is expanding as a function of the tangent of the latitude, whilst the east-west distance expands as the secant of the latitude. For an orthomorphic chart, scale must expand equally in all directions. The result is a perspective projection 
in which the north-south distances are too long. Mercator adjusted the vertical spacing of the parallels of latitude to make them also a function of the secant. He changed them from this to this. In doing so, he produced the world's first orthomorphic chart. Track directions on the map were the same angles as those on a spherical Earth. His projection was therefore calculated, not optical. So the Mercator chart is a non-perspective but orthomorphic projection. Mercator solved the problem in 1569. Because his solution was so simple, elegant and correct, we still use his projection today, over 400 years later. A modern Mercator chart looks very different from his own, because we have subsequently discovered and explored so many more countries. However, the basic principles of the graticule, the network of latitude and longitude lines, have not changed. He got it right.